Okay, guys, so here is a difficult question. The question says, a number P, so we don't know what that number is, yields gives a remainder of 3 when divided by 5. It also gives a remainder of 5 when divided by 7, and a remainder of 11 when divided by 13. Let's stop here for a moment. Whenever you have a question like this on the test, you could try numbers. So let's try the number 8 and see if it applies to all this. Oh, no, it doesn't. Well, let's try 13. Oh, it doesn't. 24? No. 37? And we keep on trying different numbers. But this will take a very long time. And in this particular question, it may probably be impossible to reach the answer. So what do we do? We take a look at the numbers we have given and the relationships between them, trying to find a certain trick, okay, or hint to help me. So what I do is I say, okay, when this number is divided by 5, I have a remainder of 3. When it's divided by 7, I have a remainder of 5. When it's divided by 13, I have a remainder of 11. Don't you notice that the difference between the number we're dividing by and the remainder is always 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. 7 minus 5 is 2. 13 minus 11 is 2. That must mean something. So here's the clue. Okay? Now let's try a few numbers for the first case, which is when divided by 5 gives me a remainder of 3. Let's try that in blue down here, just so we can make sure that we understand how um, I'm going to get the rule that we're going to use to answer the rest of the question. So, I want something divided by 5 to give me a remainder of 3. So let's try. Now, 5 divided by 5 is 1. It's divisible by 5, so definitely not. 6 divided by 5 will give me a remainder of 1. 7 divided by 5 will give me a remainder of 2. 8 divided by 5 will give me a remainder of 3. Why? 8 divided by 5 equals 1 remainder 3 right? 8 divided by 5. 5 times 1 is 5. 8 minus 5, 3. So remainder 3. So 8 divided by 5 gives me 1 remainder 3. So it applies. So 8 is, 8 is a possible number for p, given the first um, case, which is when divided by 5, it gives me 3. Now, what else can we, can we try? Well, we can try a number like, hmm, what do you think? Let's try the number 13. What is 13 divided by 5? 5 times 2 is 10, and then a remainder of 3. Okay, what next? 18. Keep on adding 5s. So 8 plus 5, 13. 13 plus 5, 18, and so on. 18 divided by 5 is 3. 5 times 3 is 15, and a remainder of 3. So all of these numbers work. Now comes the hard part. Well, didn't we realize a little while ago that the difference between the remainder and the number I'm dividing by is 2. Now try to add 2 to all those possible p's right here. Try to add 2 to all those possible values of p, the 18 and the 13 and the 8. 8 plus 2 becomes 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so yes, it's divisible. 13 plus 2 is 15. What is 15 divided by 5? It's 3, so it's divisible. How about 18 plus 2? It's 20. 20 divided by 5 is 4, so it's divisible. What did I do here? I added 2. Instead of p, which was 8 or 13 or 18, I made them into p plus 2. So what was p? It was right here. It's the 8 or the 13 or the 18. Okay. Now, when I did 8, 13, and 18, I got a remainder of 3 as I wanted. Now when I try to do p plus 2, add 2, which is the difference between the number I'm dividing by and the remainder, I get numbers that are divisible by 5. So this is a rule. The difference between the number you're dividing by and the remainder, which is 2, if added to the number we are dividing at the beginning, the 8 in this case, or 13 or 18, the p, then it becomes divisible by 5. So p divided by 5 gives me a remainder of 3. Again, what the question is saying up here is that p divided by 5 gives you a remainder of 3. Now we know that. But we also know 
that p plus 2 will not give me a remainder, meaning that p plus 2 is divisible by 5. Now, if you do the exact same thing for the two other cases, right here, 5 and 7, and then 11 and 13, you will find the same rule exactly. That means that p plus 2 is divisible by 5, and p plus 2 is divisible by 7, and p plus 2 is divisible by 13. Now, again, guys, why did I say p plus 2 in particular? What not, why not p plus 1 or p plus 3? Because we know from the rule here, we know from what we've done, that the difference between the number being divided by and the remainder is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2, 7 minus 5 is 2, 13 minus 11 is 2. And we know that if we add that difference to the original number p, then it becomes divisible by the number we're dividing by. So p plus 2 is divisible by 5, similarly p plus 2 is divisible by 7, and similarly p plus 2 is divisible by 13. Okay? Now, what does that mean? It means that p plus 2 is divisible by the product of these three numbers, 5, 7, and 13. Okay? Now, really quickly, let's take a look at the rest of the question. It says if p is less than 1,000, what is the maximum value of p? Okay, so I'm looking for p. So let's keep on going. p plus 2, as I said, is divisible by 5 times 7 times 13, which means that p plus 2 is divisible by, okay, let's add a by here, 35, 5 times 7 is 35, 35 times 13, okay? Um, here, I worked this out already. Let's not waste more time. And the product of these numbers will be 455. So 5 times 7 times 13 is 455. Okay? Now, if p plus 2, guys, is divisible by 455, that means that p plus 2 must be a multiple of 455. That means, in black, that p plus 2 will equal 455, which is basically 455 times 1. Or it will equal 455 times 2. Or it will equal 455 times 3, and so on. Now, 455 times 1 is 455. We know that. 455 times 2 is 910. 455 times 3, wait a minute. That's really big. It's going to be 1,365. Let's make sure that's right. So 910. 900 plus 455 is going to be 1,355 plus 10, 1,365. Okay, so I'm right. So p plus 2 either equals 455 or 910 or 1,365. However, the question says that p is less than 1,000. So I definitely cannot use this value. But beware, I'm here asking you for p plus 2, not p. Now, we know from the question, let me change the color again. It's given from the question in um, red that p is smaller than 1,000. So p plus 2 must be smaller than 1,002. I added 2 to both sides. Now, p plus 2 equals 455, smaller than 1,002. That's right. P plus 2 equals 4, 455 times 2, which is 910, still smaller. So both of these work. But I want the maximum value. Okay, so I take 910. Therefore, I choose the answer, that P plus 2 equals 910. But I'm not looking for P plus 2, I'm looking for P. So I subtract 2, leaving me with 908. So the answer to this question is 908.